All right. Let's do this thing. I'm going to share my stream link out with everybody. Thanks for joining once again. All right, there we go. I think that's out now. Oh, that's interesting. You can go backwards and forwards in Firefox by holding Alt and using your mouse wheel, and I never knew that. Interesting. All right. Well, let's get going. Um, I've got about an hour to do this, and uh, I guess I'll show you mixing and then hopefully uh, mixing, mastering, and exporting, because these are all going to be like the same... Um, same general balance, I think. I may have to do some automation for the volume, but that's it. So let's listen through these again. If you were here last night, you recognize all of these things, but if not, uh, welcome. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep an eye on the chat, but... Oh yeah, I can do that. There we go. Uh, let me turn my click off. There we go. So first thing I want to do with these is I'm going to get the noise out of here and actually I'm going to bring my mixer even though I, I hate how this looks. I'm going to dock the mixer down here. Uh, usually I have it on two monitors. This is way too squished in my opinion, but we'll work with it. Um, I'm going to get rid of the noise here because there's always some, like these, these are coming from different sources. I don't know how people... Um, necessarily recorded them, so I'm going to put some spectral denoise on each of these tracks. And what I'll do, so this is on clarinet 1, where's clarinet 1? Uh, if you haven't used denoising uh, software before, RX-7 is amazing. Uh, Reaper comes with one built in, and it works, but uh, I, I think it's just, yeah, RX-7 is pretty pretty damn good. <laughs> Um, so what you do is you'll listen through, you'll find a section that uh, has noise in it. And usually I'll just loop this section. So what you have to do is train the noise, uh, the, the denoiser. So if you hit learn in this, it will learn this. What I don't want though is there's like a little pop or something here. And that will remove noise that's not actually noise. It's, some, it's a sound, right? We want just the background noise. So I'm going to look for a section of this that doesn't have that nasty pop which I think it's at the end of this. Oh, it's at the very beginning. Aha. So it's a sound I can't even hear. Did I get rid of it? No, it's still there. Let's look at another section. It is still there. Get, get out of there. There we go. So this is getting closer. But I want something that's just like static. You see there's a lot of motion in this, and I don't want to get rid of that. What's nice, though, is when we do this for one, since this is the same person, once we do this for them, we don't have to do this again. So I'm going to find a good noise profile. Oh, my God. I wonder if they're, like, moving around in their chair or something. <laughs> Sometimes people just cannot sit still. Okay, come on now. How is how is this in every single part of it? Okay, hang on. Something's going on here. Oh, right there. Okay, there we go. Finally got a spot with no click in it. You can hear that really tiny click. I don't want to remove that. Okay, so it's learning, it's learning, it's learning. That's probably good. That's looking like a good noise profile. So that one's done. We'll move on to number two. Spectral denoise. And if you're working with the same people a lot or same instruments, you can build out templates for these. Um, 
especially if like the person records pretty consistently. And if you're doing something um, like this, this one's going to be pretty fast, but if you wanted to do it a little bit more um, surgically, there's this quality thing down at the bottom. I would take these individual tracks into RX-7 standalone and do them there because it'll process them in a very um, powerful way, uh, something you can't do in real time necessarily. So, um, although I guess if you're learning it, let's try this and see. If you're learning it, it's fine. As if you're in adaptive mode, which sometimes people use, I don't recommend it. Um, I, I think if you grab a noise profile, it's a much better way of, of doing this. So again, we have a little click. Looks like it's at the end of this. Nope, definitely at the beginning. Oh my god. <laughs> These little tiny clicks. Where is it? It's like in the middle. There we go, perfect. So we'll learn that. Learn, learn my robot. All right, so that's going, that's going, that's going. Give it about, I don't know, 15 seconds or so. We want it to, we want it not to just learn the noise profile, but understand the noise profile. And then we'll move on, I'll put one here. Oops, I didn't need to do that. <laughs> uh, also, you've got spectral denoise and voice denoise. Ugh. They will do similar things, but the voice one, I mean, it, it's probably obvious, but just to say it, the voice one's more for voice and can usually be used, I think it's it's meant to be used in adaptive mode, so you, like, you can do it while, um, like for dialogue and stuff, it's really nice. There we go, we finally got one that doesn't have a pop in it. I guess there's a little pop in the middle there, but let's see if we can get rid of that. Yeah. So I'm looking, I'm looking down over here. Like if there's any pops up here, it's probably not uh, baseline noise, like just room stuff. It's probably them like clicking a key or squeaking a chair or something like that. So we don't want to get rid of that noise because that's going to be where um, a lot of the, uh, I don't want to say brightness because it sounds like a bad thing, but where the character of the instrument uh, sits. All of this stuff down here is usually just like, air conditioner noise and stuff. Traffic noise. All right, let's see if I can find a better noise sample for this fourth one. There's a lot of, like, if you can see, I'll, I'll raise the waveform. There's a lot of moving around and stuff. This looks like a good spot. Let's try this. So clarinet three is done, and we'll do one more right here. So there's a little bit of noise up in that upper region, but it looks like that's just like the general baseline for this track, unfortunately. So as if you're removing stuff up there, it's just gonna affect the quality of the sound a little bit, but ultimately if it's if the noise is built in there, you you don't want that anyway. Um what's nice with RX7 too is it lets you reduce the noise by an amount rather than completely cutting it out and it controls some of the artifacts and stuff as well. So you could tweak these if you notice like jittering and stuff in the sound. Um, I'll, if we get that this time, I'll address it, but I'm not gonna re reproduce it or anything because I do want to get this finished. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's listen through with just the no denoise. And so I've denoised it. I want to get a good like EQ for each of these instruments now. Uh, but already it's sounding a lot better with the denoise. It's a little bit quieter now. Um, we're gonna we're gonna deal with that when we start putting an EQ and stuff. I might raise this a couple dB. Uh, and for EQ, I just use re EQ. Um, oh god. 
There you go. Reaper's got a pretty, like, really decent EQ built in. Um, I used to do this all with Reaper plugins, and then I bought Isotope plugins at one point. I just spent the money. And the secret to doing this, actually, if anybody's listening and doesn't want to spend a lot of money on this stuff, you buy one plugin, and then all of a sudden you get access to loyalty pricing. So I think I bought RX7 Elements for like 17 bucks. It was on sale. And then I got access to all their loyalty pricing and bought the rest of the like audio production suite or whatever it's called. I think I bought it for like 300 bucks, um, and it's usually 700 so loyalty pricing is a great thing. All you have to do is buy one Isotope product and then you get access to that. So buy something cheap and then buy the expensive stuff. Don't just buy the expensive stuff first. Fun fact, you learned it here. Um, and I'm, damn it, I should have you pay me for that information. <laughs> I'm a bad capitalist. Information should be free. Okay, so let's uh, let's listen to this. And I want to just get a good EQ. This is looking pretty good, though. What I want is just like a nice balance uh, from the. Sorry, I want a nice balance of uh, the like the harmonics going from top to bottom. Usually, the 500 range is a little muddy. Let me see if I can. Yeah. So what that looks like is. Yeah, this range is a little is a little muddy. What that looks like is when a harmonic, uh, you can see like these little peaks. Well, one of those, the, the bottom peak should be the fundamental, that should be the strongest one. If the peaks above it are a little bit stronger, that means the room they're recording in or the instrument or something is making, uh, is highlighting those uh, harmonics a little bit. We don't want that. We want to take a little bit of that away. And it's usually like every track has this happen, <laughs> so it's not like, oh, this one person, like this is something I usually do for everyone is lower the 300 to 500 range. There's usually something in there that's a little nasty. Just make it a little bit clearer. Even up in the 800 range is a little bit too, so I'm gonna... Oh, you can really see it there though. It may just be this whole range, so I'm gonna get rid of that one. Try not to do too much, like, really specific EQing when I'm doing this, but you never know. Um, and this is a clarinet. It doesn't need all this stuff below 50, so I'll get rid of that with a high pass. And then usually boost a little bit here just to compensate for the stuff I removed lower. Not too much, though. And then I'm going to boost the gain because uh, we cut it when we remove the noise. We're going to need some volume eventually, so I'll raise everything 4 dB in the EQ. Um, you know what? Now that I have a... Um, eh. Now that I have the denoise on, I can put a gate on first so that nothing gets through that I don't want. I may have to tune the gate a little bit later, but I'll just put it on there so I don't forget. So EQ, um, this EQ will probably work for all of them as a first, as a first, uh, first effect. I'm gonna take a look though. This is that I want to be a lazy mixer. Yeah, this one's got to... Here's some room noise in here. That's another thing we're trying to tackle when we do denoising, is to get rid of some of the room sound, because I don't... I don't necessarily like how everybody's rooms sound. I'd rather put them in my own space uh, after the fact. This person's recording quality is pretty good. Yeah, nothing out of the ordinary there. We can keep that. Um, later on, I'll probably add, like, I'll, I'll do some specific EQing for each instrument to give them their own, like, space. But I'm just going through and getting some general... Um, corrective EQ. So this one you can see 
up in the 1000 range. This is peaking around the same level as the um, as the fundamental, maybe even more. So I'm going to cut out there. It should clean up the clarinet a little bit. All right, that's not even better. Yeah. Cool, cool. Moving on to clarinet one. We're gonna drop that on there just to get a good start, but let me look at what it's doing. Oh yeah, so this this clarinet's recorded really really well. You can see that like it's pretty even. Uh, it's it's an even decline from the fundamental. That's really nice. And there's like very low, very little noise in the in the signal. I'm gonna just put my my basic <laughs> like 300 to 500 nudge downward. Usually every track will need a little bit of clarity there. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, now I'm gonna start listening through. And did, it, did, it, did I put the, yeah, I put the four, four dB gain on all those. Let me just expand this because I'm not gonna need to route just yet. I usually like to put a, whoops, not recast. I like to put some slight compression on these just in case. Um, sometimes people get excited and play very, very loud. <laughs> this will just uh, help us keep that from happening. So pretty light, like really light compression, uh, longer attack, longer release. Um, Actually, I could probably keep the attack there. I think the attack on Reaper is pretty um, conservative by, by by default. We'll do like one, I don't know, 1.4. But not too much. We're down at negative 32. Um, I'll show you what, what we want this to do. So especially in the high range, you see, um, let, me, let me zoom in on this clarinet actually. So depending on where people record, you'll see that like certain notes just pop out. That's no fault of theirs. It's just like where the mic is, how the instrument reacts. So I'm trying to just smooth that out a little bit. If I uh, if I applied the effects, maybe I can do that actually. Let me do that just to show you. Um, <laughs> Spy apply effects to items. There we go. Let's see what, what happens here. Uh, of course it did a stereo. Um, mono output. That's what I want. So take a look at like right here, what happens, what changes. Well, it boosted everything, right? <laughs> so the EQ boosted it. Um, but the Compressor is going to bring it down just slightly on these peaks. And I could probably go even more because it's still sticking out a bit. So let's do... Let's go up to two. And I'm going to bring this down a little bit. So if you've used Audacity or anything like that, you'll probably be used to like... Uh, rendering effects. I can't remember what it's actually called. There we go. So this looks better. So if you see the the peak stayed the same, everything else grew a little bit. Um, so we're evening out that dynamic range there and making it so that we're compensating for like the mic or, or we're certain notes stuck out. So I don't want to do too much or it'll sound like really nasty, but this uh, 
this will this will help out keeping things balanced. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to apply the effects because I'm probably going to want to change them later at some point. And I don't want to have to undo things and all that, but just know that that's what's happening. Um, so I'm going to put that on all of them because it's pretty, uh, it's not too much and it'll help us out a lot when we're mixing. So I'm trying to start from a place where they're all even, right? And then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Since this is clarinet four, it's usually playing lower. I'm going to take out a little bit in this, like, 1,000 range. And then in some of the higher clarinets, I'm going to remove this 200 range. At the lower, lower area. Just to give it some space. Essentially, mixing is just changing volume <laughs> in different places. So we're going to change the volume down in this 200 range, but keep the top two are going to keep their 1,000. Um, maybe we'll do the same for clarinet three because it seems to be in that range as well. So I'll just give them some separation. What's nice is these are pretty balanced, like I can hear everything. Also, these are all mono tracks right now, so sometimes I'll mix in mono just so I don't get um, I don't get too focused on like the stereo uh, the panning and image that yeah, panning and stereo imaging and stuff. If I get focused on that too early, I try to do too much with it. So you can do a lot with the faders first and then switch to that uh, as like a sweetening step. So I'm just going to get volume balanced first, with no panning yet. So like here... Right here, these lower voices can probably come down a bit, so... I'm going to expand these out. I'm going to I'm going to crush this down for a sec and actually remove the mixer cuz um right now we're just going to do some some volume automation cuz these are places where it's like I want the first clarinet to be brought out. So these two are kind of overshadowing. I guess the other three are overshadowing. So um I could just bring up the first clarinet. Let's do that. Oops. So if you hit V in Reaper, it'll bring up the volume automation um, lane, volume envelope. There we go. So I think it's just, yeah, you know what? It's just that these lower voices are too loud. So let's, let's move them down a little bit. We're going to open up those automation lanes. And this is the way that I do this. Um, I'll highlight and then control shift and drag down. Um, also, I'm, I'm using right click and drag to select the tracks as well as the time selection. That's actually a really cool feature I learned from John Tidy on reaperblock.net. Um, I think it's in, God, I can't remember anymore, but mouse modifiers, mouse modifier. That's in help. Um, okay, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> it opened up another window. I th maybe it's in here. Yeah, mouse modifiers. There we go. So in timeline, range view, yeah. Uh, right click, right drag. There we go. Default action is marquee, select items, and time. So you'll have to change that if you want that default action to be changed. Uh, really nice to be able to kind of emulate Pro Tools if you're used to that. Um, but really nice to be able to select items and timeline at the same time. So anyway, there we go. Caveat. Uh, control shift when you open up the volume lane and you can just drag down a large section. 
So we don't need too much to get this to pop out. Like we've done enough on the EQ side that this should be enough if we do like 2 dB down. And I changed my mind. I don't want the lowest voice to be less. I want that bass to carry us. But this one can come down. It's kind of... obnoxiously loud for some reason. This may have been something we talked about too. Um, so this this clarinet is recorded in a way where it's like very flat. The peaks are really flat. So it's like compressed up against the top. It's just going to sound louder um, than the others by default. So I may just bring this one down like in general a couple dB because we're going to hear that one over the others regardless. Um, just because it doesn't have as many peaks. There we go. Sorry, that's a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, we want the first clarinet to come out there, and I can hear that pretty well. Also, I don't recommend mixing in headphones, but since I'm <laughs> streaming, I kind of have to, or you'll hear it. Um, Before I send this out, I'm going to listen to it through my monitors, though. We'll get there. Ooh, that was not lined up. What did I do there? There we go. <laughs> that was also weird. give first clarinet just a little boost in the thousand range. A little more clarity. that like strength that everybody else has. So I'm gonna I think I'm gonna boost clarinet here. Yeah. Boost clarinet one two dB. Lovely. Excellent. All right, moving on to the next one. Ah, okay. All right, so everybody's got to teach a lesson, so I'm going to end stream. Um, but we will pick this up a little bit later. I wanted to show you Isotope plugins. Um, uh, what time are you teaching, Joe? Okay, so it's 12.30? Gotcha. Um, all right, so anyway, look up Isotope plugins. We showed you RX-7 today, and it's already like a super awesome plugin. Uh, some of the other ones that I'm going to use are Neutron and Ozone. So those are their like mixing and mastering plugins, but really cool stuff. And uh, we'll wrap this up. I'm probably going to get this finished before I get to show you the plugins, but hopefully we'll catch another stream at some point, and I'll see you later. Take care.